Hi everyone, it's Tawny. Today we're going to be doing a first impressions try on video. I've got a lot of makeup that I've never tried before and I did buy a couple like repurchases of things that I just needed to get different shades of or wanted to try again, like you know what I mean? Um, so I pretty much have like a full face of new stuff except for um, mascara, which that's typically with me. I end up not having new stuff of mascara because there's just not a whole lot of mascaras coming out that like really convince me like to buy them and stuff. So we already got moisturized and I'm going to go in with the Ordinary High Adherence Silicone Primer. Now this primer has been out for quite some time now, but I have not been able to get my hands on this. Um, the Ordinary, they do sell it at... I don't know if it's my Target and Ulta, but they now sell it at Ulta, at least the one that I shopped at. We have like three in the area, one where I directly live and then two that are like, you have to drive like an hour to get to those places. And the two that are like an hour away have a better selection than what's local. But I'm so grateful that we have an Ulta because it's still something. I still get my makeup fix in by shopping and like walking in the store. So that's still something. But they had this at the one out of town. So I figured I'd pick this up and I also picked up another product that we'll discuss in a little bit. And I just wanted to see how well these products worked. This primer was like five, six dollars. So that's pretty good price. I'm just gonna put a little bit all over my face and just kind of rub it in with my fingers. I've heard very good things about this primer. So I was really excited that we I was finally able to like get my hands on it to buy it. And I feel like this is something that I could have been buying like years ago, but it just was never in person and I just never thought of it enough to like buy it online. So I'm finally purchasing it and testing it out. I can feel the silicone as it's like getting into my skin. So I hope it doesn't sit on the skin and it actually like like my makeup doesn't look bad with this primer underneath. It's definitely a weird texture because when you put it on, it kind of has that like typical primer, almost lotion-y consistency, and then it becomes this like silicone, and I'm like, this is a little weird. Like I was expecting it to come out with that silicone like texture and look to it, and it didn't, but now it has that, which is so weird. Like I don't really know, like it's kind of off. Um, not sure how I feel about it, but it's something to try. My foundation for today is the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I have the shade Very Light. It's 0.25-2. Don't really know what that means. I just kind of picked one that I thought would work really well. I'm not sure how I feel about um, tinted serums. I don't typically like a lighter coverage formula. That's just typically not me. I prefer something more full coverage to like the maximum coverage. I want to cover everything and have a new face. Like I you know, don't like the skin I'm in, but whatever. Um, so I'm gonna be testing this out today and seeing how I feel about it. It has a dropper and it's very covered, if you can tell. So I might just like rub this against my face instead of dropping it because it might like work out better for me this way. So, oh, it looks like it'll be a good shade. I was a little worried. I'm usually good at figuring out what my shade is and like not messing that up and like knowing what I'm doing. But I feel like there's sometimes that I like get overly excited, think I'm like getting it right and then I'm like way off. Like lately I've been getting a lot of foundations that are too light for me and I can usually work with them but I found that it's like really difficult to even work with them because then my skin ends up being too light and then it just kind of looks really like crazy and I hate the way it looks so I'm trying to buy like slightly darker than what I usually buy so then that way I can like work with it from there. Because I had seen a video from Robert E. Christie and she is a fairly close to my skin tone and she kind of does, like she started this and this was why I decided to do it, where she will buy something a little bit deeper because then she can brighten up under the under eye. She can actually work with it. And then if she has any bronzers or highlighters or anything that's a little bit deeper, it's easier to work with than for her because the foundation is a little bit deeper. So I'm also sorry that the focus is getting a little bit weird. I have a light directly behind my camera and that usually isn't a problem, but today it seems like every time I like point the brush out like this, it picks up on the lighting so it really washes me out. I'm trying to work on that, but that's not something that I'm like super um, familiar with. So I'm not sure what I'll be able to accomplish with that. Um, so far, it 
I can see that it covered. I can see that it added a little bit of color, but as you can see in my cheek, it didn't cover much of anything, but it's a tinted serum, so it's not going to actually cover much. It's just going to like add a wash of color. So I'm not mad at this, but I feel like I might need to go in with concealer and just cover up some blemishes that are bothering me. So for concealer, I got the Ordinary Full Coverage Concealer in 1.1P, which is fair with pink undertones. I had a really hard time figuring out what my shade would be in this because it was super hard to see where the shade tone was because it was clear down here on this bottom little sticker and look how small that is. And then on the tube, they give you this little ring and this is how you're supposed to figure out what the shade is. And it wasn't like I could just test them in the store. So I'm hoping this works and it's the right shade and it can actually like do something for me. I'm just gonna put two little squirts on the back of my hand and then dot it on my face and then go in with my um, beauty blender. I feel like that might be the best way to get it on my face the way I want it. I've never tried this concealer and I feel like I've heard good things, but you never know. I guess we'll be the, the judge of that over here testing it out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this on my face actually and just put it up here and then down on my chin. Okay, I've noticed that this is a lot of pigment like a lot more than I was expecting. Like you can really see the color of it as it blends up underneath my eye. I'm not mad at it. I don't know how much it's like actually covering, but it's not bad. Like I don't hate it. I think I actually kind of like this. Um, it's hard to kind of judge um, new makeup when you're doing a full video of first impressions when your primer and foundation are all first impressions. It's easier if you're to like break it up into like bronzer blush highlighter and try those out with a base you're used to or test out a new powder over top of makeup you're used to how it wears. So you can kind of compare to what actually works to the new thing you're using. I think this is a smidge too light so I'm kind of glad that the serum is a little bit deep I didn't really go with too deep with like my whole get something deeper method, but I do feel like it's a good shade for me. Whereas the concealer, I feel like it's a little bit too light. Like you can really see it's kind of washed out on my chin there. And I'm not real like a big fan of that. I feel like it goes a long way, which that's really cool considering you're only getting a small tube. You only get, how much do you even get of this? Eight ml. Oh, 0.3 fluid ounces. So that's not a whole lot if you consider that most foundations give you one fluid ounce. This is one fluid ounce. So you're getting a third of that, which that's kind of it's crazy. But I guess that means you don't need to use a whole lot on this kind of concealer. I'm not hating it, but I'm a little nervous that I'm going to be a little bit too pale today. And I don't want to be pale. So... I'm tired of being pale like it's the end of November it's the week before Thanksgiving when I'm filming this and we've already had a little bit of snow um, when my boyfriend and I went Christmas shopping last weekend I believe it was we ran into some snow when we were headed up toward it like you have to go up a mountain to then go down the mountain to get where we were going and we were headed up the mountain it was like a whiteout just snow flying everywhere it wasn't laying and it wasn't like sticking to anything but it was enough that you could tell it was snow and I hate snow so it was like we're getting into that time everything's just looking dull and boring and I don't like it but at least for the next month we have Christmas decorations out to kind of like make things look a little bit nicer so for powder I got the Milani make it last setting powder and if you know the Milani prep set and go translucent setting powder is my favorite mine looks like crap you can tell that I've hit pan in it like I really like this product so I figured I'd test this out and I don't know if this is supposed to be like the new one of that because I heard that the prep set and go is supposed to be discontinued or it was I've had mine for a little while so I'm not sure and I haven't seen it out anywhere to actually tell if it's still being sold or not my CVS no longer sells Milani they took out the stand to put in eco tools and real techniques brushes and sponges which I'm okay with having those additions to CVS but I kind of miss having Milani there because Milani is a bit expensive and CVS is a good place to get things for fairly cheap um so I found this at my Walmart because my Walmart sells it I think my Ulta carries it but a very small amount and I don't think they would have the powder because the powder is like 
not a new item. So I'm just putting this all over my T-zone and my under eye, and I'm noticing it's covering really well. It's doing like what a powder is supposed to be doing. So I'm not mad about it. I feel like it's a good powder. If this is the new um, Prep Set and Go, then I'm not mad so far. I haven't really seen it in action, seen how well it'll do like later on in the day. But so far, it's not bad, so I don't hate it. I actually like it. I think it works really well. But then again, powders for me are kind of just like, they always work, so I don't really have any issues with that. So we'll see how we, you know, how it works from there. So next up for bronzer, I have a new bronzer that I've been wanting to test out and was just kind of on the fence if, if I was actually going to get it or not. But I was at Sephora and I decided to get it. If I could get it open, we could actually talk about it. Okay, wait, I think I'm getting it. Okay, it's in a plastic box instead of being cardboard or paper or whatever which makes it harder to get into but it is the Huda Beauty Tantor and I got the shade Fair because they didn't have the next step up which I think was light and I would would have preferred that one but this one doesn't seem too bad um the packaging seems very posh and I kind of like how it feels like it's like that glass texture even though it's not quite glass like it's that like hard plastic but I really I never liked the packaging because this whole clear thing I just felt like looked tacky and I still feel like that in person but it does still feel luxurious enough that I don't hate it so I'm gonna use the back of my beauty blender and I'm gonna go right into it and then just stamp it onto my face I've heard very good things about this bronzer this contour bronzer so I've been wanting to test it out for quite a while now and finally decided to grow to go ahead and get it and so far it's not bad it's coming off a little bit orange and I'm not a big fan of that if you can see the shade it does look a little bit orangish and I think the next shade up wasn't as orange but of course I couldn't get it which is a problem with testing out new stuff or getting stuff especially when you don't like it's not something that's readily available to you like you have to kind of like when it's available you have to, like when you're able to get it that's when it's available if that makes sense so I kind of wish I would have been able to get the next shade up to see if it would have been a little bit more grayish. I would have preferred that over something that's a little bit more orange. Um, not sure how I feel about it being under the chin. I've never been good with contouring in that area and I don't think this contour bronzer is really like helping me in that way. Um, I don't hate it but I also don't you know. But I'm having a little bit of issues with you know the skin underneath my my chin and then I have some like pimples and stuff that have really been bothering me the last week and that's not why I'm wearing this like turtleneck I thought I'd try it out I've never worn it before and I've had it for a while and I'm not sure how I feel about it red's not really a color I like gravitate toward like ever unless it's in stuff even though I like the color red I just don't know how I feel about it and then with me having blonde slash brassiest hair like it's kind of leaning brassy because I need to get it done and like fixed you know taken care of so I'm not sure how I feel about it but I figured I'd test it out and just you know go from there um I actually really like this on the forehead I think it looks really nice but I'm gonna really try and blend it into my hairline to see how that looks because I don't like having that line I like having it okay I'm having a really hard time focusing today I'm not sure why my camera's like being real weird like I keep getting washed out and I don't know what to do about it. Like, I don't know how to fix it. It's driving me nuts because then it's making my video look bad because I'm just a big blob of white. Um, but we'll get there. We'll figure it out. But yeah, so far I'm not hating it, but it's also not like my favorite tone. If my hair could just stay behind, it's long enough to stay behind my ear, but never wants to. Like I can understand these stupid pieces that like never grow and just want to chill out. But like for the rest of my hair to just like, oh, we're going to get in your way every time you're eating or talking or doing your makeup. It's like, why? What is the reason? What's the reason? So I like it on the nose. It looks a good bit like. Not like that suntan, but it's kind of like, I like putting it all over the nose. I don't really contour my nose, if you've noticed. I try to steer clear of the middle part of my nose, but usually like end up not. But I actually kind of like, once it's kind of blended out and not quite as harsh, I actually like the way it looks. I don't think it looks bad. I think it actually kind of like, you know, is pretty decent. 
yeah, I kind of like straight on. I really like the way it looks. So not bad. Not bad, Huda. Not bad. I don't know if I claim it to be like a favorite, but it's definitely something that I'm kind of glad that I was able to test out and see how I feel about it. So then for blush, I should have had these things open before I started filming the video. Okay, so it's the Fenty Beauty. I got the cream blush and cream uh, lip gloss balm cream in the shades Peach Pout and Peach Face. And these are what they look like. Let me open up the blush. They're minis, which isn't that big a deal, but I kind of wish... Well, actually, is this the actual size of what this product is supposed to be? Because I heard that the blushes were like incredibly small. So is this like accurate that it's this small? But then here is the, you know, cream gloss balm. I have a regular size gloss balm and it's a little bit bigger than this, but not by a whole lot. Like maybe like less than like double, you know, but I'm excited to try these out. I've heard really good things about the blush. I'm doing it with a brush and maybe I shouldn't be, but I'm going to. And I really was interested in this shade in particular. I thought it was really pretty and a very nice corally peach tone. So I figured I would get this whenever I saw it. So of course, when I was at Sephora, I was like, I'm scooping this up. Like I like walked in there with a purpose to find this. Like I went to the holiday table and I was like, you're mine. You're coming home with me. Like I have to have you. Cause I just thought the, the, co the color and the tone was just so pretty that I just like really wanted it. So I like the way it looks so far. I think I went a little bit too ham, but I think that'll be okay once I do my eyes. I think it'll like tone it out. But I think this is really pretty. And I really like the way it like applies evenly, even with a brush that I wasn't sure would apply really well with. So I'm excited about that. So then we have a new highlighter, which I had a really hard time opening this when I got it. It is the NYX um, Highlighter Illuminator in Rose Gold. It is the La Casa de Papal Honey Money Heist Highlighter from their new collection. It looks like this. They had a gold one and then a rose gold one, but the gold one was a little bit too deep for me. So I had to go with the rose gold, but honestly, I don't even mind because look how stunning this is. I just wish the packaging wasn't quite as bulky. Like this is just a lot. Like it's gonna be hard to store this unless I just keep it sitting out on my desk, which I'm okay with as long as it works good, but it's just kind of like in your face. Okay, so this is very chunky glittery. It's not, my camera's having a really hard time showing you this, but it like, it looks okay, but it's just straight glitter. And I don't really necessarily like highlighters that look just straight glittery. I want one that actually has a little bit of like pigment underneath. So I'm not just applying glitter to my face. And this one, it has a wet look to it, but it's very glittery. I mean, I keep saying that word, but that's like the best way. It's not quite chunky, but it's also not like, you know, I don't know. I feel like glitter is just gonna be flying everywhere today. And I didn't quite want that, but you know, I don't think it's the worst highlighter I've ever used, but I don't know that I'm like living for this, you know? It might be one that like on a rare occasion I wear it cause it's not really like, it's not quite doing it for me. I don't know, I'm not gonna rule it out. I'll see how it wears through the day. It could look nicer as it wears, but honestly, I'm just a little bit like, eh, you know? So I didn't pick up any new brow products. So I'm going in with the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim Defining Pencil. And I did pick up new LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencils because I had used up my last one and didn't realize it was my last one. And I've been going through brow products like a lot lately. Like I guess they're just all towards the bottom of them, like of each pencil that I have. So like every single one I'm running out of, I think I need to get a new CoverGirl brow pencil. And I really like that one as well. So I'm just trying to like use what I have at this point. And this one's close to the end as well. But I did get two of the LA Girl brow pencils. So now I have a backup to go with the new one that I have. I did laundry right before I started filming this video. And I just heard like water gushing into the washing machine or whatever, however that works. I honestly don't know. 
and I was like, is something, did somebody like flush a toilet? Is there a toilet in my apartment I don't know about? Because I have two toilets, my doors are locked, I'm here with just my cat, like, um, and he's chilling on my coat because it's really comfortable. It's a really nice Columbia jacket that I got last Christmas on sale at Kohl's. Um, but I was just like, is there a toilet? Like, I have two toilets, like, because I have a half bath downstairs and a full bath upstairs. And I'm like, I know I'm here by myself. Like, I know that. And I'm just like, does the neighbor have a bathroom in their garage? Because that's weird. So I had to get a new NYX Tinted Brow Mascara. I got mine in the shade Brunette. Yes. So whenever I went to put my last one away, I went to do this. And the spoolie here, you know, the part with like the mascara stuff broke off and it was just so goopy and disgusting and it was just like not even salvageable, honestly. Like, I don't even think I could have fixed it. So I had to just chuck it and it was a new one. Like I had only had it for like maybe a few months, but like not long enough to like be ready to trash. And I know there was still product in there because it was real goopy and gross. So I had to buy a new one. Because I don't know if, like, mine was defective or if I beat it up or, like, squeeze it too hard that it broke off. But, like, I really, I don't know if maybe I didn't take care of it well enough. But, yeah. So, I had to get a new one. And I almost didn't remember to get one. And I was like, no, no, no. We need one. Like, I need to have this on hand. It's my favorite brow mascara. Like, I've been using the Essence Gimme Brow and the ColourPop Brow Gel that's clear but I really like the one from NYX like the best like they all work exactly the same except the CoverGirl or the ColourPop one is clear but I just really like the one from NYX well enough to like want to go get it again it's the third time I've repurchased it now because the first one I ran out and kept using it for a couple months after I like didn't realize that I had ran out of it which is really funny like I'm really dumb but um then the second one broke, so now I have the third one, and cross our fingers that it lasts and I can actually, like, have it a good while because I'm always worried it's going to, like, they're not going to sell it anymore because it's, like, my favorite and I don't want it to, like, you know, I don't want them to stop selling it, but it could happen. So for my, for, yeah, for eyeshadow, I picked up the new Essence Top It Up eyeshadow palette but I think it might be a little bit too purple toned. So I'm not gonna use that today, especially because I'm wearing red. So I'm going to go in with a different palette. Let's see what I got here. I think I'm gonna go in, this is a fairly new palette. It's the Elf Electric Mood and Tiana Major 9 Feeling Lucky eyeshadow palette. And I've only used this like once or twice. So I think I'm gonna go in and do like a reddish neutral look today. And you know, see even more how I feel about this palette because every time I I have used it I've just done a neutral look so the browns are a little bit worn but the rest of the shades haven't been touched so I'd like to try and get through a little bit more than just browns you know I like experimenting with new colors but I find that I use brown a lot because it's just an easy like everyday color it's not like I can go to work with like bright blue eyeshadow and like glitter and stuff like I could but people would look at me weird and I work with people directly so that would be a little bit awkward <laughs> so I am very late to the game and I just watched the very first original um, Spider-Man yesterday with my boyfriend um, I've seen the Tom Holland Spider-Mans I know of the Andrew Garfield ones just enough to know about them, not to actually have watched them. I'm not a big fan of his, so I'm not sure how I feel about watching the movie. Like, I like Emma Stone, but is she going to be a good enough Mary Jane for me to, like, you know, be interested in watching it? But I think I will just to, like, see them all, to see if there's any plot lines that, like, I'm supposed to know about. Because I honestly feel like with um, the Spider-Man movies, they might be, like, acting as if Tom Holland was every Spider-Man and just keep using the storyline. Although I think all the movies have the same storyline. I honestly don't know. I've only seen the first Spider-Man the with Tobey Maguire and I've seen all, well, I've seen the two with Tom Holland. I haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse and I'm not sure how that like ties in with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. 
how that like storyline goes into a play. I'll have to ask my boyfriend because he knows a lot more about Marvel stuff than I do. I'm like an outskirts Marvel fan and he's like an in-depth Marvel fan and he's like trying to bring me into like the Marvel verse. I think that's what that's called. Um, he's trying to like get me to like know a little bit more about it. And the movies aren't bad, not by any means, but they're a little bit like not quite my thing. I'm not an action movie type person. If you know me, you know I'm like more romance kind of a thing. Like that's just always been my thing. Um, but I really do like the Marvel characters. I like the people. I'm a big Hawkeye fan, so I'm really excited for the new series on Disney Plus coming out this week, so I'm very excited about that. Um, Thor is my favorite, and then I like the Hulk, especially when he was in the third Thor movie. I thought he was really good in that. Um, Captain America, I'm okay with. I'm not sure how I feel about the new guy taking over for Captain America because I'm just so used to um, Chris Evans, but I think he'll do a good job because he seems very committed. So, and especially the character, they're only like making it so that it's like an honor to be Captain America. So at least it's more like he's not taking it over from Chris. He's like just being, you know. And I really like Bucky now, especially after watching um, the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I really like his character. I think he's like one of my favorites. The only ones I haven't really seen, I guess would be the old Spider-Man. I have seen the old Hulk actually, which is the weirdest thing because that's not like a movie I'd actually like actively look forward to seeing. But I have seen that one. And then I have, I haven't seen the um, Captain Marvel. That's the only one. And I'm not a big fan of Brie Larson. So I'll have to watch it and just hopefully change my mind about how I feel about her. But I kind of don't really care for her as an actress. I just kind of think she's like, like, and right now she's one of those, like, she's in everything. And I'm just kind of annoyed with that. So maybe if I become a fan, I won't hate that as much, you know? My eyes are watering, so it's making my brush get, like, wet. And it's a good look on my eyes, but it's just kind of, like, bothering me, you know? It's just enough to bother me. But, yeah, so I just kind of would like to catch up on the rest of the Marvel movies I haven't seen. And so that way I'm caught up and, like, storylines make sense. Because I watched infinity war and endgame like back to back which i'm really glad i did because it was so depressing at the end of infinity war that i was like really glad i was able to just go on to the next one and then endgame was also depressing too because it's like half the population's gone when they come back they haven't aged but everyone around them has it's like the whole concept was so depressing and i'm just like was this even necessary like why did we have to do this to the people like, whoever wrote the comic books, I guess that would be Stan Lee. I'm like, this is already depressing. So why do we have to keep this up with the movies? Like, I could have gone without that. But at least Thor was sort of a hero. He he should have been the one. He technically did get rid of Thanos in Infinity War. But it also still got rid of the population. So I can understand why Thor turned out the way he did in Endgame. But I still like... Thor's still my man. I don't care how fat he gets. He's still my guy. Like, I still love him. I still think he's hot. He's just hot in a new way now. But, um, yeah, so it was kind of interesting. I watched those movies, and then I rewatched Guardians of the Galaxy. And Guardians of the Galaxy is, like, the perfect segue to Infinity War and Endgame. Like, I didn't, I watched those movies and didn't quite realize how like influential they were to the rest of Marvel, to the rest of Avengers. And then I rewatched it and they kept talking about Thanos and they kept talking about it being Gamora's dad. They talked about Gamora's sister, who's also very influential in Endgame and Infinity War. I guess more so Infinity War. And I actually really like Gamora's sister. Like she's one of my favorites. And I really like Gamora too. Not quite as much. I think her sister's a little bit better. But um, I do kind of both like them. But um, so it was kind of interesting to see how it like really tied in. Like that whole movie was like the perfect before Endgame. Like they almost should have released them before like leading up to Infinity War and Endgame instead of releasing them a little bit earlier than they did but I'm not mad and it's kind of nice that you can actually go back and rewatch and stuff makes sense 
Um, I think Iron Man 3 was sort of like that. Like, it kind of helped you understand. And especially, like, the kid that showed up at the end of Endgame. I don't want to, like, super spoil it for people who haven't watched the end of Endgame. But if you know, you know. But I think it was kind of cool. That, like, you had to kind of look it up, who the kid was. But, like, it made more sense to me because I watched Iron Man 3 after I watched Infinity War and Endgame. And I had never seen, I'm like tearing up and it's going to mess up my whole eye look. And I actually like it today. It looks really pretty. It goes really well with this red like shirt. But I watched Iron Man, which I had never seen before. I watched all three of them. And I don't like the first two. I think they're very outdated I, because they were made in the early 2000s. So I'm like kind of, eh. But the third one was my favorite. I actually did like that one. I think that storyline was a lot more interesting than the first two. But it also helped me understand the guy that has the robotic legs, it helps me understand who he is now because I have no idea who he was and how he tied in. Because I remember seeing him in Adventures Age of Ultron and I didn't even know who his character was. So now I actually know who he is. Fuck. Okay, so for setting spray, we have the Maybelline Glass Spray um, setting spray. Yeah, setting sp it's a setting spray, I said that. Um, I've heard good things about this, but I've also heard some people, like, not care for it as much as, like, other setting sprays. Ooh, it's got a nice, nice spray to it. So I'm just going to spray that all over the face, and then we'll do lips. It smells very good, like, one of my favorite scents from a setting spray. I've never, this is the first time I've tried it, and it's been out for, like, ever. Um, it took a little bit to get the sprayer to work, but it is a brand new product, so I'm not mad at it. And I actually really like the way this look turned out. I think the bronzer just looks kind of a little off, but not bad. But I think it's off because the rest of my face is so pale. But I think all the makeup on top meddled really well with what's underneath that I think it actually created like a decent look. And then the eye look, I like think was my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to use the gloss balm cream in the shade peach pout and I'm just going to coat my lips with that okay I can tell it's a little bit heavier than the original um lip gloss balm thing but I'm not mad at it. I actually kind of like it. And I like the color and like the shade that it's coming. You can't quite tell, but it's just kind of like a My Lips But Better shade. So I don't hate it. So this is the final look. I actually really like the way it turned out. I think it's going to pair really well with this shirt today. It's kind of giving me like Lumberjack sort of Spider-Man vibes, you know, when Spider-Man becomes red and black, not red and blue, but you know. I still, you know, I really like the way it turned out. I think a lot of these products are pretty good hits. I think there's just a couple that I'm like a little on the fence about. And it could just be like the shades and the tones and stuff. Because like I said, I had a hard time finding certain ones. And then with the concealer, I had a hard time figuring out what my actual shade was. So maybe if I like found the right shade, it wouldn't look so bad. It would look a little bit better. But this is the finished look. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell down below so you get notified when I upload the next video. I do apologize for having late uploads and being a little bit sluggish. I've just been a little uninspired right about now. I wanted to do like sort of a vlogmas of sorts, but with more of like makeup. But it didn't work out too well with Halloween in October. So I think I might just wait and not do it this year and just put out whatever videos I can and then just give you guys extra content in the days in between. But thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.